everyone, I'm Kate Andrews and here's a look at what is going on this week in the news. And we begin in news from the Vatican. Pope Francis has approved putting Saints John Paul II and John XXIII on the Church's universal calendar of feast days. The two saints' feast days, both of which are optional, not obligatory, are October 11th for St. John XXIII and October 22nd for St. John Paul II. The Vatican newspaper L'Osservatore Romano published a decree from the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Sacraments. The Pope determines who makes the universal calendar, called the General Roman Calendar, based on recommendations from the Congregation. Pope Francis, who canonized the two saints in April, approved the memorials given the extraordinary nature of these pontiffs in offering the clergy and the faithful a unique model of virtue and in promoting the life of Christ. In news from around the world, Pope Francis will address the European Parliament in Strasbourg, France, November 25th. The Parliament's president made the announcement September 11th. From reports has the details. The Vatican has confirmed that Pope Francis will speak before the European Parliament in Strasbourg on November 25th during its plenary assembly. The president of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz, who actually met with the Pope last year, announced that the Pope had accepted his invitation. The visit is being described as a symbolic gesture that's very significant, especially since Europe has become increasingly secular. German Cardinal Reinhard Marx, who serves as the president of the Bishops' Conference of the European Community, welcomed the idea, adding that it will be a good way for the Parliament to remember its Christian roots. November will be a busy month for Pope Francis. He's also tentatively scheduled to travel to Turkey at the end of November. Back on October 8, 1988, John Paul II became the first Pope to speak before the European Parliament. At the time, the Berlin Wall still divided Germany, and ultimately communism still divided Europe. Using symbolism, the Pope reminded the Parliament that Europe should learn to breathe with two lungs within one same body. However, the session started off with an unexpected disturbance when Parliament member Ian Paisley from Northern Ireland interrupted the Pope, yelling anti-papal slogans from the Protestant Reformation. I call you to order. And I ask you to stop this disturbance. Eventually, he was removed and the Pope continued For his speech. The second time, Mr. Paisley. Pope Francis will travel to Strasbourg and back the same day. It will not be considered a pastoral visit to France. German Cardinal Reinhard Marx of Munich and Friesing, president of the Commission of the Bishops' Conferences of the European Community, said that Pope Francis' decision to come to Strasbourg before visiting any individual European Union member state gives a strong signal that the Pope supports and encourages the pursuit of European integration and unity. In news from around the country, Missouri women seeking abortions will now have to wait 72 hours, one of the nation's longest delays. State lawmakers have overridden Governor Jay Nixon's veto to enact the delay that does not include exceptions for rape or incest. The new requirement will take effect 30 days after Wednesday's vote by the Republican-led legislature. Nixon, who is a Democrat, denounced the measure as extreme and disrespectful towards women, while supporters called the delay a time of reflection. Missouri's current law requires physicians to provide women information about medical risks and alternatives to abortion and offer them an opportunity for an ultrasound of the fetus. Three Missouri clinics have stopped offering abortions in the past decade and the number performed in the state has declined by one-third to a little over 5,400 last year. And finally in the news, as we previously reported, the Pope will preside over his first wedding ceremony as pontiff during a nuptial mass in St. Peter's Basilica September 14th. Among the 20 couples from the Diocese of Rome, Pope Francis is set to unite in marriage are Catholics who have been living together and some who already have children. The Papal Mass celebrating the couple's marriage will come just a few weeks before the start of the Extraordinary Synod of Bishops on the Family. Pope Francis has said the Church's pastoral approach to helping couples must be intelligent, courageous, and full of love because the family is looked down upon today and mistreated. The ceremony will be the first public papal celebration of a wedding since 2000, when St. John Paul II joined in marriage eight couples from different parts of the world as part of the Jubilee for families. He also presided over another joint wedding for a group of couples in 1994 as part of his celebration of the International Year of the Family. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kate Andrews. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.